if you tell someone that your simple harmonic oscillator is damped, their proper response is, how damped is it? And that's what we're going to answer right now. How damped could it possibly be? You answer that with something called the quality factor. Q, it's called the quality factor. And as I alluded to on the previous board, it's a balance between the omega naught, how much it, how fast it oscillates, and beta, how fast it damps. So it's defined as actually the ratio of those two, omega naught over the damping parameter beta. All right. So I'm not going to go through the details of the algebra, but basically you can rewrite our previous expressions using Q. And you'll often see it in books this way, so I just wanted to give it to you real quick. The equation of motion for the damped oscillator using Q is x double dot plus omega naught over Q over Q x dot plus omega naught squared x double dot. That's the same. So the one place we had a beta, we just switched it to, to a Q um, based on that definition. And then we could also take our solution, our Z of T, our complex solution, and rewrite it with Qs rather than betas. And we would get A E to the, uh, well first is the uh, decaying part, E to the minus omega naught over 2Q. And then the oscillating part, E to the J, and then omega naught times the square root of 1 minus 1 over 4Q squared. Since I'm not doing this live, I'm having to look it up because I don't have it memorized. 1 minus 1 over 4Q squared T plus 5. So exact same equations, just we are um, rewriting them in terms of Q instead of beta. This can lead to a few different situations. You can have what's called underdamped oscillator. And as the name implies, this means the damping is small. If the damping is small, then this number is small and this number is big, and Q is very big. So Q is much bigger than 1. So we can look at these to get a feel for what's going to happen. If Q is much bigger than 1, this term doesn't really do much. You would expect it to look basically like continuous simple harmonic motion. And in the solution, sure enough, if Q um, is really big, this part's really small, right? Oh, I forgot my T. This decay with time is really small. And the deviation from omega naught is really small. This is omega naught times 1 minus 1 over 4Q squared. Well, if Q is big, this is a really small number compared to 1. All right, so it's basically 1. So it's really you're just going at omega naught T plus phi. So in that case, it looks like simple harmonic motion. The mass on a spring you watched for 20 minutes, which you may have watched for 20 minutes, was underdamped. It took many, many, many cycles for the um, uh, damping to drop the amplitude very much. You can also have overdamped. That's where Q is uh, very, very small, a very low Q. And I'm not going to call it an oscillator because let's see what happens. If Q is very small, this damping term is very large in the equation of motion, and this damping term is very large, the amplitude would come down really fast. But what's really interesting is inside of here, okay? If Q is really small, like say it's 0 0.1, 0 0.1 squared is 0 0.01. 0.01 times 4 is 0 0.04. 1 over 0 0.04 is 25. 1 minus 25 is minus 24. So when Q is really small, it makes this thing inside this square root be negative. Uh-oh. If it's negative, it's imaginary. It's got like a J in front of it. If it's got a J, it's going to cancel that J. And guess what? Your complex exponential is gone. Right? You have no more complex exponential times time. You get no oscillations. Not only would your oscillations amplitude decay quickly, it doesn't oscillate at all, okay? No oscillations. If I had one, say that mass of spring, if it were overdamped and I lifted it up and let it go, it would just kind of slowly make its way back to the origin. It would actually never get there. Okay. The one other case that's special is um, uh, critically damped.
And this is the case where q is a half. q is equal to 0 0.5. This case is special. It also uh, won't oscillate. Um, it, you know, it's not an oscillating solution, but it's the one where it would get back to the origin the quickest. Right? If you're just a little bit underdamped, then a mass that's displaced from the origin or from its resting position will overshoot a little bit, and then technically it'll oscillate really slowly. If you're, uh, that was if you're slightly underdamped, if you're slightly overdamped, it'll actually sort of take it a long time to make it back to its resting position. But critically damped is the magic number where it's the quickest that it gets back down. So that's important in lots of uh, engineering applications. So Q is used many ways. We'll use it more when we talk about resonance, but that's just a quick introduction to the quality factor.